And good afternoon and happy holidays to you. I'm Tina Brock, your host for Into the Absurd, and you're joining us for a very special holiday episode of Into the Absurd, where today we're going to be talking with noted author and scholar Jerkar Bjornsson about his work on the playwright August Strindberg. We're going to be talking all about Strindberg's work, and we'll take your questions and your comments in the chat. So please join us in the chat and stay with us for this next hour as we talk with noted author and scholar Jerker Bjornsson. Now, a little bit about uh, August Strindberg, born in Stockholm in 1849, and he is the author of such great and memorable plays as The Father, The Creditors, and uh, Miss Julie. So Jerker, Jerker is going to be here with us today to talk with yeah, us yeah. all about it's the, the time and yeah, the life. Yeah. Tina! Oh, did I interrupt something? Oh. Ah, ah. Let's see. oh, did I interrupt your show? I'm so sorry. Oh, it's not like anybody's watching anyway. <laughs> oh. Well, look at you, Tina Brock. Ever the loner. Oh. You look so sad sitting there like a lonely old maid. You know, it really hurts me to see you sitting there all by yourself at a cafe and so close to Christmas. Poor baby. You know what? What it reminds me of? It reminds me of how I felt this one time when I was in Paris and I ran into a wedding party <laughs> in a restaurant and the bride was at the bar, knocking back margaritas with the maid of honor, just so bored with the whole thing. Do you know where the groom was? Hmm? Yeah. He was playing pool and taking bets. And I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> this does not bode well. But, okay, so it's not a great example. But it's the same way I feel right now in my heart. Just looking at you sitting here all by yourself, mon chéri. Oh. Do you know what I think, Tina Brock? Hmm? I think you should have kept him. Hmm? Do you know I was the first one that told you to forgive him? Do you remember that? I, I know you were hurt, but sometimes in long term relationships, eh, you, you just have to have selective hearing, you know, you you'd probably be celebrating your 30th wedding anniversary by now. Oh, Tina, do you remember that Christmas when you went to visit his family out in the country and when you came back, you were so happy you glowed. And you kept talking about the virtues of home sweet home and oh god you couldn't wait to get away from the theater you even stopped going on auditions home is best no doubt and then the ch theater and the children not that you know anything about that oh, that window closed a long time ago <clears throat> Gee, this place is dead. Well, oh, oh. guess I'll just have to help myself. <laughs> I just came back from the Swedish market. Look at this. I got glug. Mm -hmm. You want some? Oh, it's so good. It's supposed to be warm or hot, really, but oh, here, try some before I do. No? really good. Mm. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh. <sighs> Come on, have some. All right, whatever. You have to see what I got my monkeys. <laughs> my grandbabies. Now this, this is for Lisa. She's two. Hmm. 
you know, at that age, they don't even care. You just want them to have something to open, you know? Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. And this, this, huh. this is for Tommy. He loves playing it. Whoa. <laughs> Almost looks real, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> but, but, what? You didn't think I'd shoot you, did you? <laughs> now, you wanted to shoot me, though. That I can imagine. Huh. I stood in your way. At least that's how you see it. <sighs> but my conscience is clear. I did nothing wrong. Those rumors about me getting you fired from the play are just that rumors. There's not an ounce of truth to any of it. Oh, well, does it really matter what I say? <laughs> yeah, you blame me. Okay, <laughs> Sarah. Oh, you have to see what I got Daniel. <laughs> I know it's kind of a luxury item, right? <laughs> but look at this. Most men want their initials, but he wants tulips on everything. And I'll have you know that I designed the tulips myself. Mm -hmm. I just designed, just picked them up from the seamstress. I, I don't know. It was kind of tricky, but I think it came out just right. <laughs> Oh, the man has such small feet. But you know what? It helps him walk with perfect elegance. <laughs> You've never seen him wearing slippers, but you should see him glide across the room. Look at this. <laughs> and then when he's mad, he stomps with his foot like this damn people who can't learn to make a decent cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, God, he still gets worked up over nothing. Oh, did I tell you that we have someone come and cook and clean three or four times a week? Hmm? Her name is Sue. And Daniel gets so impatient with her. I don't know if she doesn't make the coffee as strong as he likes or i don't know she hasn't swept the stairs or something oh <laughs> and if the floors are cold in the morning when he gets up and his favorite slippers aren't around so so stupid she tidies up and i can't find the damn things <laughs> and then suddenly there they are <laughs> and then when he gets home from work they're gone again Sue stuck them in a drawer or under the dresser in the bedroom or something like that. Oh, God. <laughs> He's so silly. <sighs> mm. He really is a sweetie, though, my little man. Mm. <laughs> you should be so lucky to have a man like my honey bear, Tina Brock. Yeah. <laughs> What? What's that look for? <sighs> All I know is that Daniel's a faithful husband, and that's what counts. And you know how I know, right? Huh? I asked, and he told me. What? What? He's never been seriously interested in any other women. How many women can say that about their husbands? Oh God, there's that look again. I was skeptical for years, especially that time I was away doing a show in Portland and old, um, oh God, what's her face? Uh, Tammy? Mm. She came knocking. Yeah, she literally knocked on the door one day and wanted to know if I was around to run lines with her. But she just wanted to seduce him. <laughs> she knew I was in Portland. If she tried that when I was around, I would have torn her damn eyes out. <sighs> I wouldn't even have known about it if he hadn't told me. Yeah, we're very honest with each other. We have no secrets. 
I mean, he knew that it was better I find out from him rather than gossip. <sighs> Would you believe it? Tammy wasn't the only one. I mean, he can't help it that women are attracted to him. I mean, have you seen the men they're married to? <laughs> oh, all he's accomplished as a broker, as a producer, and he's handsome too. I bet you looked him over a couple of times. Hmm? <laughs> I never could trust you, Tina Brock. But you're not his type. <laughs> and you always seem to resent him somehow. <sighs> you know what? That's why. That's why you should join us tonight. You should come over. Just show that there aren't any hard feelings between you and Daniel, or between you and me at least. I, I, I don't know, but it, it feels so weird to be frenemies with you, especially with you. Oh, I don't know, maybe that's why I stood in your way that time. Yeah, I didn't even have a reason. You know, I, I'll admit it, our friendship is pretty odd. I mean, we're not really friends friends, you know? Honestly, the first time we met, I was afraid of you. <laughs> I was so afraid that I wasn't going to leave you by yourself anywhere. <laughs> so no matter where you were or what you were doing, I decided I was going to be there too. <laughs> I didn't dare be your enemy. So I tried to be your friend. But then, I don't know, whenever I invited you over to our house, there'd be this tension. I could just tell that Daniel couldn't bear having you there. You, you, you didn't fit. You'd call it the proverbial third wheel or call it having a virtual stranger in our home. Whenever the two of you were in the same room, he'd eventually find an excuse to leave. He didn't like you and he hated having you visit. I tried everything to, to get him to be at least polite to you, but I couldn't, he was just so rude. <laughs> that is until you went and got engaged. Then, all of a sudden, the, the mood changed seemingly overnight. It's almost as if you could finally show your true feelings for one another now that you felt safe. <laughs> you know, three became four and it wasn't so odd. Huh. The tension was gone. Poof. He'd put his hand on your shoulder. <laughs> you'd stroke it. Then you'd look up at him and Oh, lover boy. <laughs> and then what? He wasn't jealous. Why? That's strange. And I remember when you were godmother to Samuel, 
I had to convince Daniel to kiss you at the baptism. And he did eventually, but you looked so confused. I didn't think about it then. In fact, I haven't thought about it at all until right now. No wonder you looked so confused. You were probably thinking, why would she do that? What's wrong, Tina Brock? Cat's got your tongue? Are you sick? Did you lose your voice? You're just sitting there looking at me, pulling all this out of me like a dentist pulling teeth or something. I, I always sensed something wasn't right. <laughs> let me see, let me see. Why did you break up your engagement? And why didn't you ever visit us after that? And why won't you accept my invitation to come over tonight? Shut up! Don't you say a word. I know now. I know now. It was because of this and this and this. Yep, yep, that's the way it was. Ugh! I am not sitting anywhere near you. I can barely look at you. Ew. That's why I had to put tulips on everything, which I hate, by the way. Oh, and that's why, that's why we had to go to Lake Dunmore every summer because you love lakes and hate the beach. And that's why, oh, that's why Daniel insisted our son be named Samuel because that was your father's name. I hate that name. That's why Daniel always insisted that I wear your style of clothes, read the books you said you liked, eat your favorite foods, your desserts. That's why, that's why he told me to eat more dark chocolate instead of ice cream. Dark chocolate is gross. I love ice cream. But I don't eat it anymore. Oh my God. It's so awful. It's all so awful when I think about it. It's just disgusting. Everything, everything I am came from you. All the things that you love. Your goddamn soul infected mine. Corkscrewed into it, turn by turn, until it was in there so deep that when I tried to pull it out, there was nothing left of me anymore. I, I tried to get away from you, but everywhere I looked, I found traces of you. And then when I tried lifting my own wings and taking off, the only dragged me down until I plunged into the water. My feet bound, my mouth gagged. I struggled to free myself, but the more I tried to escape, the deeper I sunk. And you were there waiting for me at the bottom, a giant crab holding me between your claws. And there I am now. Eyes open, mouth open, drowned. I hate you. 
I hate you. I hate you. And you just sit there calmly with that apathetic look on your face. And it, it doesn't matter if it's Christmas or New Year's, whether, whether anybody's happy or unhappy, loving or hateful. There you are. Quiet as a hawk by the rat hole, just waiting, waiting, waiting. For what? For something to happen. For me to get sick or die or, 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 or divorce the man I love. The man who loves me. Yeah. I pity you. I pity you, Tina Brock, because I know that you're unhappy and wounded and you're angry because you're crippled inside and don't know what to do with yourself. But I, I can't be angry with you. I want to be, but I can't. See, you're the weaker one. And what happened between you and Daniel doesn't bother me one bit. I never even think about it. I mean, why should I? <laughs> so what if I eat dark chocolate? I've heard it's good for me. I don't know. I can enjoy it just as much as you. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. <laughs> and so what if I wear the same styles of clothes as you? <laughs> so much the better. I like scarves and colors and jewelry. <clears throat> but that only makes Daniel want me more. You lost, Tina. You lost, and I won. He never talks about you or thinks about you. No. See, I know. You figured I'd have left him a long time ago, like you left that weakling fiancé of yours, but I didn't. That's not how I do things. No, I don't have the regrets you have. I never will. When you think about it, if you really think about it, in this very moment, I really am the stronger one. You didn't take anything from me, but I took oh so much from you. I'm a thief. And now that you woke the fuck up, you can see that I have what you lost. You, you can't. You can't keep a man's love with your tulips and chocolate, but I can. <laughs> I have my son, Samuel. Who cares that it was your father's name? He loves me. He doesn't even know who you are. Why the hell can't you say anything, for God's sake? I used to mistake silence for strength, but maybe there's just nothing going on in that puny brain of yours. Maybe you just don't have anything to say? <laughs> no, can't forget this. These tulips. Tulips for the man I love. And all these gifts for the grandkids. It's going to be a wonderful Christmas.
Your problem, Tina Brock, is that you can't learn. You're rigid. You can't bend whatsoever. And in the end, you draw, you broke like a dry stalk. But not me. You've taught me so much, my sweet friend. And I thank you for that. Thanks most of all for teaching my husband how to love. And now I am going home to love him. Okay. Um, well, hey, everybody. Thanks for being here and happy holidays to you all. Be, be good to each other out there and we will be right back. everybody and welcome back thank you all for attending this evening's performance of the stronger uh, my name is Stephen Smith uh, I am head of the drama department at Delaware County Community College and I had the privilege of attending uh, and sitting in on some of the rehearsals for this particular production uh, did a little bit of consulting on the production and uh, so we're going to bring uh, David Robson who uh, did the adaptation and uh, Sonia who not only did some brilliant acting, but um, did the translation. Uh, and uh, Tina is ready to answer any questions that you have as well. So if you'd like to ans ask a question, please um, put it into the chat. You can uh, just hit the chat button down the bottom of your screen there and, and ask your question. Uh, and I'll be happy to ask it of our panelists. Um, I think I'll get um, uh, started um, to begin with. Uh, so David and Sonia, <clears throat> um, why this play? Why Strindberg? Why now? Um, well, I, I, I'd read a biography of Strindberg uh, a few years ago, and I visited Sweden, I visited one of his last homes, and so I was always interested in his work, read his famous stuff, Miss Julie, The Creditors, um, and so I always liked his work, it always really appealed to me, and so I read the biography, and just around that time, coincidentally, uh, Tina uh, contacted me, we just had a conversation, and she mentioned a play by Strindberg that I had not read called The Stronger, and um, I read it, liked it, thought it was really interesting, and I kind of pitched to her the idea of, of adapting this play, uh, taking the old translations that I'd used and kind of updating it. And um, that's kind of how it started. And Sonia speaks Swedish, and so she was able to correct my, uh, my adaptation. Let's put it that way. And um, is there anything that you, either of you feel, and Tina, uh, jump in, please, if you'd like. Um, uh, does it does this particular play speak to uh, the current moment that we're living in, the the the, the current times that we're we're living in? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, I I feel like there's this whole difference between how people feel politically about COVID and about the vaccine. And th there's there's so much di um, diversion, is that the right word for it, in um, in our society today. And I, I feel like there's, I feel kind of like there's a bit of that in here too. Yeah, it, it sort of feels like, um, I, I feel like, Sonia, your character comes in with a lot of assumptions, which may or may not be right, and you get in that railway in the sky in your mm -hmm. mind, and you just go go to town on that, yeah. and and I kind of feel like that is the way conversations go sometimes, um, you know, circling back to what Sonia mentioned about politics or whatever, whatever the thing is that's happening right now, just so much 
um, so much has happened over the last couple of years that's really strained our, our mental health relations, just you name it, and it's all it's all in there in the mix. And uh, it does feel when you're playing it as though a lot of assumptions are brought in, but but it's not about the conversation. It's just about making sure that whatever's behind those assumptions, that anger or that frustration or that thing gets out, that that, that, that thing gets out, but, but that, that it's really not about the conversation. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what it feels like in the play. And that's sort of what, yeah, I know what it feels like in the world right now. One thing I did uh, in adapting it was um, it was written, I think for women probably in their thirties. And so I, uh, I, I updated it because um, uh, uh, neither Sonia nor Tina are in their 30s anymore. They're in their 20s. And um, so I updated it and I thought it really worked for women who might not just have children, but might have grandchildren as well. And I thought it was kind of, you know, these buried uh, resentments. That There's a longer were... history, too, which I find interesting, like yeah. 30 year history. Yes. So. Yeah. And so these these deep wounds that have never really healed, at least on her part, yeah. maybe on her part, too, I thought were really kind of interesting to explore. And uh, what I loved about their performance in it is they really brought that sense of of the past to it. And uh, they were really able to to bring that out of the play. And what I what I discovered in, in watching it so many times through the rehearsal process is uh, you know, it really is that they're, they're evenly matched. I mean, Sony's the only one who has words, but Tina's character, and of course, Tina as an actress is able to bring so much emotion just in terms of what she shows on her face. Um, and it's, for me, it's a really powerful um, battle between the two of them, uh, even though only one of them speak. All right, that's a, that's a question that we have here from uh, Robin, um, uh, kind of speaks to what you're just talking about there, David. Uh, He's asking, I think this is for Tina uh, mostly, can you speak to the acting challenge, challenge of silence? <clears throat> uh, sure. Um, I mean, I love the silence, you know, as a company, Beckett is a favorite playwright of ours. We haven't done a whole lot of his work lately, but um, there's so much to mine in the, in, in the silence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you, um, and what's great about it is, and as we, you know, we were just joking today that we worked on this for, I don't know, started all the way back in June and just going, you know, every couple of weeks and whatnot. And, and what's really fun about it is that it slightly, as it should, changes every time, depending upon, you know, what, how fired up Sonia is or what's going on or how she points the gun at me or whatever. And, and that's kind of, I mean, that's always the way it is, I guess, right? When you get out on stages, it's going to be different every night, but there's something just really really um challenging about knowing you can always go deeper with something whether it's something that's being presented to you or something that you are you know you're conjuring up in your own mind because i'm conjuring stuff as well miss miss uh, y is conjuring at the same time mrs you know mrs x is and so that kind of tightrope is really fun every time i i think um yeah and it's so different every time too <laughs> It, it's totally wildly is. different. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah, think the I combination too of just the sort of virtual setup. Um, uh, apparently, I guess in this this particular what we just did, Sonia. So we're we're working it. We're sitting here working it, and I'm noticing something is going yeah, on back in the, with the technical end of things, you know, in this slipper cafe. And as it turns out, I guess the the the. They were flipped. They were flipped. That that we should have been actually facing each other, and you know, oh, anyway, technically. So we were like, you know, anyway. But, I'm so um, glad I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, you know, this is this is what happens. Oh, just, on, happens. Just, on just on Facebook. Facebook. Just on Facebook. Just on Facebook. Um, Hopefully, we that won't happen for the yeah, seven p.m. show. Yeah, it, it's seven thirty. Kind of, it's show, kind so. of hilarious when you're like doing like I was thinking tonight as we were coming into it, like there is something really fun because we decided to write do it in a local place. You know, as opposed to, to to taking it out to a to a larger venue or to something, and there's something really comforting about that. I think mm -hmm. when you're when you're when you're familiar with that, you know, with that mm -hmm. space. But then, um, when you're kind of you know juggling platforms and whatnot, yeah, it's it's the tricky. joys of, of we've had a, a, a couple of comments kind of uh, touching on the fact that it's maybe on Zoom and and you know, uh, Robin earlier said um, uh, kudos to all. I think I found it more fascinating with the screen close-ups than perhaps I would have live. So that's. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting and and tony said um 
It seems very much like social media, alternating bragging and complaining to no one in particular, oh, yeah. the way that we kind That's of- Yes, that's a know, great point. Uh, yeah, um, and, and uh, yeah, go ahead, Dave. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, there are a number of versions of this play uh, on YouTube. Uh, it's often used, I've found out in a couple of different ways, uh, as a student exercise in acting mm -hmm. classes, it's yeah. used quite often. But the versions that I've seen online, aside from the, the quality of the acting, which, you know, can vary widely, you know, especially when it's a student uh, exercise that they're doing. One of the things that is lost both on video and I would imagine to Tony's point uh, when it's live, what I love about this setup is this, this, this not two shot, but the split screen really works because, you know, it can, it, Tina's character can easily get lost. You know, if you're sitting on mm -hmm. watching this on stage, I, I can imagine that, that as an audience member, you would be focused mostly on the person who's talking, but here you unavoidably have to look at both of them. Mm -hmm. So I thought that this particular way of doing it lent itself well to this particular play. Mm -hmm. um, and the versions I've seen, um, they don't always capture Tina's character as well as I think the split screen does. It's so psychological. It is, right? it's very psychological. Because in one of the iterations that we worked on, um, and, and Steve, you were so instrumental in helping us sort of like, you know, kind of figure out how to combine these two platforms and whatnot. And and the one time we ran it, and and Mark Williams, who's working on the show, um, we had just tried different ways of, of managing it. Do I do we do we look at each other the whole mm. time? Do I look at the camera yeah. straight away the whole time? What happens? And I think in one of the runs that we did it, and I was looking right straight at the camera. Mark was like, "Oh no, this the is whole just, time. This is just way the depths of someone's <laughs> psychology that we just choose not to go to right now." So, and that was fun too, sort of working. I mean, I think the psychology, right, of what, of what yes. he writes, right, really, like, it's like sort of going along with that whole. Um, what is it, Sonia? What's the what's the style? What's the genre? Anybody jump in? What's the genre of film that like focuses on Norway and Sweden? And it's like, like Scandinavian. Never, yeah, like it's kind of know? like that dark. So, oh yeah, yeah, the Bergman esque yeah. kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. And kind of just everything's dark yeah. all the time, and it's yeah. just yeah. You know. so, Going yeah, on with like, these Swedish people, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh boy, they're just uh, all so <laughs> sad and so. Yeah. It's, it's the winters, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah. there's. I was depressed as a teenager living in Sweden because, oh my God, you know, like you get through Christmas and then it's like you have two more. At least months, maybe three months of darkness and cold. And it's dark when you get up. It's dark, you know, in the afternoon. It's dark a lot. I mean, and I lived it in the Stockholm area, but if you go even further up, it's even darker. So it's, I mean, it's dark most of the day. I mean, it, the sun goes down at what, 2 p.m., 3 p.m.? Something like that. Yeah. And it isn't and up for very long. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty. I, I love I love this question from Steve uh, Steve Platt. Uh, he yeah. says, um, "I loved when Sonia's <laughs> character said shut up." Um, does she really not realize that <laughs> Tina's character has never spoken? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's hearing Tina's voice in her head. I think yeah, not yeah, just yeah, now, but for years. Yeah. It's like an episode of like the Real Housewives of Stockholm or something. It's like, <laughs> shit, like wait, I'm trying. Just... So I mean, maybe the question is is you know, so we asked Tina about um, the challenge of acting silence, but Sonia, you know, what's the challenge of of just sort of stream of consciousness, sort of speaking throughout this whole it's, it's, this whole it, thing? It's been hard. I mean, I have to find my silences too, as you so wisely uh brought up to me and i've been trying to do that uh more and more but it's it's really tricky sometimes because uh yeah yeah i'm just bouncing off of whatever looks she's giving me and it changes so much so it's like <laughs> what's that look for what's that what why are you laughing at what <laughs> And so, half the time I'm not giving you, I'm not doing anything, <laughs> which is the cue for You're more the of line, a mirror. Right? You're more of a mirror. So and she like, sees them. Yeah. Then it becomes the opposite yeah. comment, much to Steve's point about the comment about shut up and I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to be giving her a look and I'm not. But it's you just, are. You're you're always giving looks. So it's well, like are you talking I, about Tina or are you talking about her character? And I'm talking Both. about the character. <laughs> She's always giving looks. So I well, can work off of whatever look you're doing at the time. <laughs> I was fascinated throughout the rehearsal process just by the these types of 
you know, not only, you know, I agree with Steve, that's one of my, my favorite moments is when you say shut up and she hasn't said a word. Um, sure. But but those moments where you say things like, you know, why are you looking at me like that? And she's not really looking at you with any particular <laughs> look or anything, you know, and is, is that, you know, why is that? And, and it's an interesting, I, I expect an interesting challenge for you, Sonia, you know, is it, is it because she's just so wrapped up in herself and what she's saying that she doesn't even really notice or, or what's going on? Um, a question that a question that I have um, is um, about the title. Um, what, what's your take on on the stronger? What is the meaning of that? Uh, of the, we debated of the, that a little bit early on, I think, in the rehearsals way back when. Uh, but you know, I, I think we, we came to a conclusion. Yeah. Collectively, it's about status. Yeah, Steve said that. He said, you yeah. know, it's about hierarchy, it's about status, and like the light bulb went off. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I talked about that in rehearsal, I think, just, just you know, and as an actor myself, you know, and an acting teacher, we talk about when we're doing scenes, who's got the greater, you know, if you think of your relationships just in your life, you're always playing around with, with where you are in the relationship as far as status, you know, and so, but it's interesting to me, you know, um, Sonia talks through the whole play and Tina doesn't say a word through the whole play and, but who is really the stronger of the two? I'd be curious yeah. to hear what the audience if, if people are still out there what they think, who they think the stronger yeah. would be because we've kind of made our decision I think collectively because we've talked about it a lot mm -hmm. but I'd be curious to see what people what people think um, any, Yeah, any comments if you want to put those in the chat or the, which, which character did you think had the greater status in the relationship or was the stronger because when I first read the play, because she talks so much, for some reason, I automatically equated that with strength and power. And as I started reading it more and, and working on it more, uh, things started to shift in my mind um, as to who was stronger uh, at any one time. Uh, and maybe it shifts throughout the play. Um, but I like the fact that her character keeps saying, oh, I'm the stronger one. I'm the stronger one. I'm the stronger yeah, one. That, yeah. He, he, she has, does he, protest he, too much, right, me thinks. Right, you know, right. I mean, the, that's a good. I like your new glasses, Sonia. Oh, they're just <laughs> read it because I'm wearing contacts. Oh, great. So it's, um, yeah. So, so, I, so Deb says it's Tina who's stronger, and uh, exclamation point. And uh, uh, Fred says, and I think this was really what we were getting at in rehearsal: yeah. silence can be much stronger than verbosity. And I think that's that's true. I think uh, you know, withholding something often gives you strength. Yes. Yeah, I sort of, I, I wonder too, like, I do think you can learn as much, like <laughs> sitting in the silent spot and listening to, or and or observing someone sort of the machinations that that you're going through the, the logical conclusions that you're making based on what you know, it does teach the other person a lot about 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 themselves as, as mm -hmm. well, which is really fascinating. Something that like I learned going through this process of, of spending time listening to you. There's this sort of, you know, when you're doing the piece, when I'm doing the piece, there's this tendency to get lost in what you're talking about, mm -hmm. Sonia, like the, the trips, the Christmas gatherings and all the things that Sonia refers to and the, and the possible places where the husband and I might have, might have, might have gotten together. And it's easy to kind of go into sort of like, memory land on that you know and not stay active with you mm -hmm. but i think that staying connected with what you're saying triggers in the nonverbal person uh, so many emotions both for yourself and for this character yeah. but also just self-reflection which is kind of interesting like to think about now like mm -hmm you know, for the holidays coming up and stuff and, and for everyone who has a lot of talkers in their family and <laughs> maybe just play the stronger and yeah. <laughs> see what happens. It's funny because early on, I thought that we had a discussion. It ended up, you know, because you talk about everything ultimately related to the play. And at some point we started talking about, well, did Tina and uh, the other character's husband really have a thing? And then I don't know if we came to the conclusion, but part of my conclusion is that it doesn't really matter in some ways, that it's really all about what she thinks happened, not about what really happened. And that's yeah. what drives her crazy. Sometimes thinking about something can just corkscrew, to use a word from the play, into you so deeply that the reality and the truth, or, you know, the truth and the, 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 the lie kind of get separated. And you do wonder, like, if she really does want to know, because 
Steve, to your point, as you were, you know, helping us sort of mine our way through this, you're like, Tina, you know, we, we you know, we need to see, like, you got to really try to get in there, you know what I mean, which is a, a cue to Sonia as well to, to kind of, you know, amp up what, you know, whatever, like, because she, I don't think she wants me to get in there. <laughs> Not Sonia, the actor, but Sonia, yeah. but Mrs. Uh, you know, Mrs. X, because yeah. every time I, I just don't think she wants to hear I don't uh, the story, which from my perspective is very different than the one that she's telling. And then it just, <laughs> after a while, it just becomes like, it becomes so sad because it's yes. like the story you've concocted in your mind is going to take you down. Yep. It could take you down. Yep. I think a lot of great um, comments here uh, on this topic of, uh, looking uh, status yeah so if you want to look um you know judith like, says tina's is stronger for sure um it she takes, seems to be winning in the votes i see yeah i think it's pretty much the the consensus is is that tina um oh michaela's comment that's really interesting in an odd and comfortable way that there's humor in it i'm glad yeah to hear that good yeah. Michaela, oh, I see that. yeah because you know i think like with Beckett, with certainly with Beckett, we think of probably differently than we do at Strindberg, but but I do think sort of the, the dark Swedish nights, you know, it, it can you can it's good to know that that in there there's there's <laughs> there's there's some um, score of of humor yeah, un underneath it. Absolutely. Of course, from having done the Ball Soprano, there's just absolutely no way that I can look at you. <laughs> and not think about that play. So I, I, I love Tina's so much about this. Great. <laughs> what I love so much about this play is the roller coaster and what Sonia and Tina brought to it. How, you know, in the beginning, yeah, Sonia comes in kind of, hey, hey, uh, what's, oh, your show. Uh, but then it goes to a pretty dark place. I mean, there's a real, the real highs and lows, which is great. And they play it so well in terms of the emotion uh, of it, both of them. So that, this is I a, think they brought that out well. I think we have a really great question here. Um, I'll be interested to hear what you think. Um, uh, Jeanette asks, um, can we switch genders? Can you imagine two men doing the same actually, thing? Or, actually, or... there's a Swedish version on YouTube, and it's two men uh, playing this part. And it's strange because I don't quite understand. They First, they have two men on a stage doing the scene, and then they take a break. So like they're rehearsing a play, and then they sit in the audience and continue. So a little meta. Yeah, like um, like a director and an actor. Mm. But so, how does it? How 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 did it play? I was interesting. I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's it's I just didn't see that. We should put that. We should. Yeah. We should post yeah. that so people can do. Yeah, because yeah. there's there's just yeah, tons I can find of the. It. But it's in Swedish. I'm sorry. Well, you got to translate it, David. And then okay. you got to be in it. She'll right. translate it all of that. I'll, I'll get true. to work. Got I don't know when I when I first watched it. When and I Steve's when you got to do it. When you, do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, <laughs> right, we'll do it. I haven't Sorry, acted Steve, in a while, I but you. You when I when I first started, um, um, yeah, and the second part, you know, I think, and this is comes to the second part of Jeanette's question here is what like well, she asks, is it is it the usual that the man is the prize, and how false an idea? You know, yeah. when I was watching this in rehearsal, I, I was thinking the same thing. You know that that and you know going back to the question of how does this play sort of address current issues? Uh, yeah. I was thinking about a lot of the issues that were brought up with the Me Too movement and. and um, and, you know, because both of these women are at least, especially Sonia's character, seems to base her whole self-worth on this man's opinion of her, you know, uh, and and um, so, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if it plays as well with two men. Um, I, what, what do yeah. you think, you know, um, uh, Jeanette's asking, you know. And, and also it was written at a time where women were, I mean, it was the late 1800s, I think this, what was it? Uh, yeah, I forget, maybe 1889, mm -hmm. yeah. something like that. But you know, you could substitute in there not to, to make, to make, you know, to minimize the, mm -hmm. the man part of it, but whether it's looks or whatever the thing is, job, acquisition, whatever the thing is, there is this, you know, I mean, it could play. Do, do, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not saying, I mean, that is the, yeah, the no, topic I, of conversation, but, but, yeah. but I do think there's this, that's why I would love to see the, the male version of it to see, because I think the things that, yeah, it and I like, think one was a director and the other one was an actor. So that so is, the director had the power. And yeah, I think so. I think so. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Jeanette, Jeanette comments, you know, today they would embrace and laugh as sisters. Uh, 
yeah. uh, you know uh, and Bob has put a link up if anybody wants to wants to read a little bit more about uh, Strindberg and his uh, oh, yeah. uh, ideas about gender conventions. Um, um, it's, it's some great yeah, stuff. he always gets tagged with the misogynist label, um, and I, I I've read a lot of his stuff, but uh, you know I, I don't know was he was he or was he not? Um, does the play uh, somehow shine light on that? And I mean I don't really care if it's a compelling theater piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's an interesting question, but but he's often tagged with that. So Jeanette, did we get to the second part of your question? In the we, chat? We, yeah. we did? Yeah, we, we did. Yeah. Okay, Robin sorry. Robin has a, another question. Uh, we have a little bit of time left here. Um, for David, uh, did you have these two actors in your head when you were putting this together? Well, you know, uh, Sonia and Tina had worked together before, and um, they always seemed to make a really good pair in the work that they'd done together before. And so when Tina and I talked uh, about me adapting this, it seemed just a natural fit. It was almost like a no brainer. So um, when I was writing it, I, you know, I, I, I didn't really have them in my head at that moment, but no doubt um, uh, it was an easy, it was an easy win having uh, these two because it just seemed to work really well. But at first we're like, well, who's going to be which character? Is Tina going to be the one who talks and talks? Is Sonia going to be the silent one? But right away, yeah. you kind of jump on the silent part. Yeah, I think it's too the obvious. Verbally the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually the one that's more silent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it just felt... It, it fit. Right. It seemed yeah. to feel right. Yeah. Definitely. It worked right from yeah. the beginning, at least we thought so. So yeah. I didn't have yeah. them in my mind necessarily, but... I kind of wrote. I kind of wrote it knowing that Tina would be interested in it because we had talked a little bit about it. So well, we wrote about yeah. Tina and, and Sonia, so you know. Well, and right. Yeah. Other... Yeah. Yeah, and that yeah. was kind of fun. Kind of building in the the beginning of it, you know, connecting it to to um, the the IRC show that Tina does, yeah. uh, the absurd show. That, that was the, the tricky part: is figuring out how to make how to make the formatting right. Just to figure that out how to make it work for this platform kind of... in a way that. Yeah, that would that would that could just get us into the play. Right, wanted it to be fun and surprising and all that stuff. So, uh, and then I found the name Yerke, um, and that was how because I'm like, okay, so we need a Swedish scholar of Strindberg. So I'm looking for all these different uh, Swedish male Swedish names, and um, one spelling of it. Well, it's Bjornsson. I Bjornsson, a pretty common Swedish name. But then I found the name Yerke, J E R K E R, Jerker. And um, I, you know, being a, you know, kind of a teenage brain sometimes, uh, I, I thought that was kind of funny. So uh, we changed it a little bit, uh, as you saw, um, but um, I thought that would be a way. That way it can be spelled that way as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so, um, this, so Robin, Robin, Robin's, uh, Steve, this is Robin, Steve's wife. Hi, Robin. What chutzpah Mrs. X has to tell Miss Y that she hates her right after wondering why Miss Y refused to come to dinner. <laughs> yeah, she's but all no, over the place. No, that's okay. You offered me your liquor. I don't think so. Get that gun out of my face. And by the way, that doll is ugly. Okay, so you, that poor child. Yeah, the gun thing came up too. Because at uh, first we were playing with the idea of having um, the gun move into Tina's space. And because of all the awful gun violence lately, we thought of the, the, the Alec Baldwin thing. We thought of, uh, you know, the terrible school shootings. It, we were all just kind of uncomfortable with that. So we wanted to make the gun look as fake as possible, which it does. It's a toy gun. Um, but I, it served its purpose. You don't give good gifts. I, I yeah, guess really I'm just saying, crappy like, gifts. could you, yeah. I, I, I shop at Goodwill. There you go. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. maybe you're not as wealthy as you make yourself no, out just, to be. Google, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're, we're uh, running out of time here, but uh, once once again, I want to thank everybody for attending, and uh, uh, Bob has put up here uh, a link, um, so uh, thanks for joining us once again, and um, if, uh, if you liked what you saw, please consider supporting the IRC by making a donation, and he's provided a link here if you're, if you're interested, if you're so compelled, uh, but once again, thank you all for attending. Um, Thank you, Steve, and, uh, for hosting Steve. and for really giving us some good direction and David for your work and Sonia for your work and and for everybody. Hey, we are coming back in 2022. It's just a question of getting getting that right time and getting it in there when we can, um, you know, when we can really 
feel like people are feeling comfortable and and I'm, I'm super excited to see that people are going back to the theater and that's and that's keep 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 going um we will be there and we're we uh we're looking at the two character plays so um you'll see more from us so we have a new website coming out soon and you'll be getting emails from us so if you're you're you probably got here because of our e email list but if you didn't head on over to the irc's website and join the mailing list so you can make sure to keep up to date with what we're doing thanks everybody have a great holiday and thanks, um, everybody. be good to each other out there okay yeah. 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 Yeah.